Hello. Hey, that worked better? <laughs> that's a lot better. I've been trying to get on Google Chrome and all this kind of garbage. That's all right. I, I don't, you sound pretty good, so it, it should be fine. Yeah, I've done this before. Yeah, okay. So how you been? Jim Wise. Well, I haven't been all that bad. You know, I'm getting old, getting up near 80. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're you're doing the Florida thing now, right? Well, I'm working a little bit down here in Florida. I do the PA for the uh, University of North Florida baseball team, and uh, I do a few uh, football games for our local high school team here, and a little baseball as well, and do a little writing. So I'm still staying a little bit busy in my retirement. Oh, so you're doing the writing again? You did any any books out uh, that I haven't heard of yet? Or well, I did write a book not too long ago, about a year and a half ago, called the. Uh, what the heck was it? It's on track anyway. The Fleet Feet of Spring. The okay. Fleet Feet of Spring. I did that in collaboration with uh, a guy that's really a great uh, track and field expert by the name of Jeff Hollibaugh. And uh, that's still on uh, available. You can get it on Amazon.com. And uh, we'll have uh, updates for that each and every year, as okay. long as we have a track and field season, that is. Yeah. But that's the only book that I've written. Well, you've written a, a book a long time ago too about <clears throat> stats and, and statistics of of other football play, players in Muskegon, haven't you? Or, or... well, I've done a lot of uh, write ups for the paper. That's uh, pretty much what I've done. Uh, okay, I had uh, what they call them, Moises memories for the Muskegon Chronicle, a little bit later for the local sports journal. So, yeah, I've had uh, stories written every once in a while on. Uh, Ex uh, great uh, athletes here in the Greater Muskegon area. Right, and we miss you over here. I know that if, if anybody doesn't know who I'm talking about, we're talking about the legendary Jim Moyes for years and years and years. I don't even know how many years because I remember meeting you back in the <laughs> '80s. <laughs> so yeah, I started in 1976 in Muskegon. Wow! As far as doing radio broadcast, and I started up in Traverse City back in the uh, late 1960s. I believe it was 1967 was my first uh, outing on the radio. But I started in the media for the, uh, well, the Muskegon Chronicle way back in 1956 as a string reporter. So wow. I've been in the media for a long, long time, Oscar. It's been a lot of great thrills and uh, certainly a lot of great memories. Yeah. I mean, like I said, when I met you, of course, was at WKVZ. And uh, you, you re- I'm sure you remember the late uh, Sherry Wilson, uh, uh, Sue. Uh, she, oh, I... she, uh, she's the one that taught me how to run your games when you and Gene would do your games. And oh, that... I remember Sherry. She used to get us uh, other scores. She would call. Oh yeah, uh, she was awesome. Pro Med or something like that. That's before everybody had cell phones. Right, right. Yeah, because she we we had like I don't know four or five lines going every time during the game, so we did uh, yeah. get call-ins from people and everything else to run your game was was quite the uh, quite the experience. I went on yeah, the forget. Re- I can't believe how many radio stations I worked for. Yeah. in Muskegon, I can go back to WTRU. And, gosh, I can't even remember all the radio stations we had. There were so many, but we bounced around a little bit from. AM, and then we made the big time when we went to FM. Right. That was at uh, Rock, wasn't it? Rock 101. Well, we went to Rock. We also. Oh, yeah. Went, you uh, At Eagle. Out of uh, Grand Valley. Okay. Yeah. Well, Grand yeah. Valley. Yeah. When I was over there. Yeah. I that, yeah, would. That's, went... that's another story. We'll get into that in a minute. But... Yeah. <laughs> that's a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I've been down here 10 years right now, a little bit more than 10 years. I did my last broadcast up in Muskegon. Uh, State football finals in 2009. And ironically enough, it was Montague that was uh, on the last broadcast, and uh, they're going to be playing this weekend. Yeah, yeah, they, they did well. Um, now, Gene, uh, Gene Young, he was he was your your partner in crime uh, doing the doing the football for. Well, he actually continued after you left, but he, he was your part. He, how did you and Gene meet? That's that was a question I guess oh, I had. We met back in high school. Okay. He was playing for Muskegon Heights, and I was playing basketball for North Muskegon. And oh, we didn't get along that well to begin with. Oh, he <laughs> was—he was the original trash talker in uh, high really? school sports. Really? Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, we met uh, one time at a restaurant in Muskegon called Sorrentos. Okay. And uh, he came over to the table, introduced himself, and I said to myself, "You know, he's not all that bad a guy." And we became really close friends right after that. And uh, he actually first uh, 
broadcast with me on a basketball game back in 1968. So we go back well more than 70 years as far as broadcasting. Wow. George Seymour started with me uh, originally in football. And then Gene, uh, after George retired, and uh, he later passed away, uh, Gene joined me on football as well as basketball. Okay. He was always with me in basketball. What okay. a great guy he was. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was always a sweet guy. I would never think of him as a trash talker. But. Oh, he was just one of the nicest guys you ever want to meet in your life. I always wanted him to get into politics. I thought he'd be a great politician because uh, everybody liked him. Yeah, yeah. He was. Besides that, he was like, what, six foot three or something? He, he was six foot six. Six yeah, foot he six. Played, he was uh, big, I know. He played basketball Central Michigan, and he also played for Dick Mata out of Weber State. He was a great basketball player. Now what he played for Central Michigan as a freshman? What made you get into sports and broadcasting? I mean, did well, you... that's pretty that's pretty easy, Asker. My dad was a football, basketball, and baseball coach. Okay, you know, back in the day when I was growing up, so you know, he was a great influence on me. And I used to sit around the table and watch him uh, draw X's and O's, and he would take me to the ball games. And uh, yeah, he was a basketball, football, and baseball coach at Armuskegan beginning in nineteen. Uh, 42 and then uh, he uh got sick and he had to retire in the 1950 season but yeah it goes all the way back to my father okay now did you ever do any coaching too or very little i did a little assistant coaching uh in baseball for walt kukowski the current uh, head skipper of the muskegon clippers walt and i worked together uh for about 14 years in our Muskegon High School. But uh, I did coaching in track and field. We had the West Michigan Track Club, Jim Kanar and I, back in the uh, early 1980s. But uh, mostly I just stuck with the media. Okay. All right. And and now when you you first got into, you said you uh, the Chronicle, now what, right. what led you into radio? Who told you, okay, let's do radio? Or did you just oh decide? Well, you know, I started out at, up in Traverse City, I did a little uh, reporting for the Traverse City St. Francis team. There was a good friend of mine by the name of Mike Cannett, who's the head football coach at uh, Traverse City St. Francis. And he says, hey, I remember Jim Moyes when he used to write. We could use somebody to write for us on uh, Friday night games when there was a conflict with uh, Traverse City High School and Traverse City St. Francis. Well, I did a little writing, and one of the sponsors wanted to know if I was ever into broadcasting. I said, oh, Certainly, I know uh, a lot about broadcasting. And all of a sudden, one day, the guy came into my office and he says, Hey, boys, we got you for an audition with a radio station. And I said, You've got to be kidding me. I was scared to death. I was actually just kidding him. I thought he wasn't serious. So, anyway, I went and tried out. Uh, we had an audition, or was four of us had tried out for a preseason basketball game at Traverse City High School. My golly, I got lucky, and I guess I got the job. And that was way back in 1968. Actually, it was 67. And uh, I got the job, and I got into radio, and I've been in it ever since. Yeah, yeah. Over now, 50 years ago now. And, I'm getting old, Oscar. I'm getting old. <laughs> See, yeah, we all are. We all are. Yeah. Um, we know, as, as far as the, uh, the, the way you deliver your broadcast, it was – you, you know, one one guy that's that's really was really impressed with you, of course, was Bob Ecker, and Bob uh -huh. does a fantastic job now. Sure uh, does. John Russell, another another guy that was always impressed with you, and uh, still does it here in the Muskegon sure area. Sure does. And you know, the one thing that I think Bob learned from you, or maybe it just Bob had it uh, natural at it, but um, the the stats. I mean, you he wrote everything down, but you had it all in your head. <laughs> How'd you, well, it, how'd you do that? Oh, it's just love of the game. You know, I can't tell you what I had for breakfast yesterday, but you know, <laughs> you put a number on a guy, I can remember that. You know, I could just, I don't know how that worked with me, but it was just something I was just God given for whatever reason. Yeah. I could just remember those memories and stats, and they just sat with me forever. I can remember one time I'm up in, uh, Superior to him up in northern Michigan, and a guy came up from Traverse City, St. Francis, introduced himself, and I said, I remember his number. You know, he says, How did you know that? I said, I don't know why. It's just something that, that was a gift of God, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it was a gift because, like I say, you never, I never see you write anything down. You just kind of. No, I didn't have too much written down, but you know, I was <laughs> always prepared. I would write a couple little notes here and there. 
generally I just forgot them, but yeah. I've always said if you're going to get into broadcasts and you can't be over uh, underly prepared, you got to really prepare. Most of the notes that I wrote down, heck, I never even said anything about them on the air. But right. You just went with the flow. And the other thing that people loved about you was that, well, you and Gene both, is that you guys used to improvise on these commercials. When <laughs> when you had a sponsor, man, you you kind of beefed uh, it up a bit. So. Uh, you, you remember Myers Thrifty Acres? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, higher standards, lower prices. You know, Gene was going to goof that up one time, and he certainly did. He yeah. says, Myers, lower standards and higher prices. And, oh, <laughs> my goodness. Joe Coletta and I just broke up laughing. We knew he was going to do that one day or another, yeah. and he did. Now that now was, we had, He, he would ad live a lot of the commercials, Gene would. Yeah. Oh, you know, he could talk, and, and that's what the sponsors wanted. They wanted him to ad live yeah yeah and he patronized his sponsors too that's for sure oh yeah and that's and that's the problem that we had uh, you know we you talked about wgvu when you guys when you guys called me and when i was working at wgvu and you said i got to get out of uh i don't know were you on eagle or or, or lcs i can't remember there's a lot of them <laughs> yeah but you you were on what the station i think it was lcs or eagle but anyway you called and said i got to get out of here can we uh, can we work over there at GVU and and I said yeah sure it would be great and we got you over there and you lasted one year because you couldn't you couldn't say anything because <laughs> it was underwriting yeah so you couldn't really say anything as far as your sponsors or anything so yeah I remember that's right we didn't have any sponsors it was a public radio station well you had sponsors but you couldn't say anything so <laughs> no no that's right we were limited to what we could say and oh that just killed poor yeah. old Gene yeah he let the rant and rave about his sponsors <laughs> so he, Cooper Auto Sales you know those kind of guys and, uh, the Trophy House he had lived all those things oh yeah, yeah. and he couldn't say anything on GBU couldn't so was, say a word yeah. yeah I remember that yeah so you guys were like definitely out of your element there that's for sure yeah we we, yeah, we lasted about a year there. I think it was a year, yeah. Yeah, Clear Channel. Oh, that's right. You went to Clear Channel after that. That's um, right. But uh, the KBZ days, I remember that very, uh, very clearly, too, because, you know, I was always part of that, and it was always a fun to do it. But then again, it was very stressful because you guys demanded quite a bit. I mean, you know, you'd have all your different people that would call in and give you scores and we had to keep it up with you and tell you all that good stuff. And Oh, we had great correspondence. Yeah. Oscar. yeah. yeah. But that was nowadays, you know, you just uh, look on the internet and you get the scores. Right. Right. Well, you, the, I, I was going to tell you the one time that you guys really didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Oscar. We always liked you. Yeah, well, the one time, though, when I was program director at KBZ and I sent you guys out with a bag phone. <laughs> you oh, didn't. Well, that, yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, yeah that you didn't like that too well. <laughs> you know, I still have nightmares every once in a while about, you know, I forgot my equipment. I forgot this. Yeah. I forgot that. I still have nightmares about that. But only one time did I ever go to a ball game and I opened up my trunk and, oh, my goodness gracious, my equipment, I left them at home. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. Somehow or another, I called uh, a guy back home, and he went over to the house and picked it up and got us on the air about two minutes before the opening tip-off of a basketball game. But I still have nightmares about that kind of stuff. You know, it was always, yeah. it was always nice to know John Van Wyk back then. You know, he worked for GTE at yeah. Verizon, so yeah. he'd always get it get it working for us. But you know, getting phone yeah. lines over there and doing all that stuff, I mean, it was... It was always a a, a rush that to, to do it, but it was always worthwhile because he always broadcast oh, we the were, game. We, we work with so many good people, you know, I can remember Bill Marshall, you know, being one of them yourself and uh, Dave Lorenz was just phenomenal. Uh, right. I go all the way back to Fred Tascone and oh, he was a stickler for detail. I'll tell you that. That was back at WTRU and uh, great people yeah. that I worked with over the years, you know, not only, you know, you and uh, Sherry and uh, so many guys. Uh, gosh, I can't remember them all. Oh, yeah. You know, I would imagine. Years. Yeah. So I like some years. So you, so I kind of have one thing in common with you. I worked at par, pretty much every station that you guys did. Here yeah, you did. State. You kind of bounced around a little bit. I did. Too, yeah, I yeah, I did. <laughs> but yeah, so the the KBZ days were great. Uh, you, you guys really found a home when you went over to uh, was. Did you go to the A? You went to the FM side, didn't you? Over at I went uh, to the Clear FM. Channel. Where I think at WKBZ, well, WTRU was strictly AM back right. in the seventies. Right. I was with WTRU for a few years. 
Uh, in fact, I think I was with WTRU up until about the middle 1980s. Yeah, because I, I think that's when we picked you when well before I was right. there, but in the in the early 80s, and then I came in there. Right. And, you and then really I got a higher say. contract for like one dollar more an hour or something. Like wow. That. Did you guys oh, ever cash your checks or did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we weren't in it for the money. I, was I know that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we, uh, we just had so much fun over the years and the, the travels and, you know, back in those days, uh, Gene and I, up until John and Cal came around and Bob uh, worked as well. We were the only, uh, guys in the, in the business that were actually doing play by play back in the seventies and, uh, throughout most of the eighties as well. Right. I mean, uh, now, Boy, everybody wants to do high school sports right. down here in Florida as well. well but John, in the beginning, we go down to the, and do a state championship game, and there wouldn't be anybody else there but us. And now you go down there, and there's 10 or 15 radio stations. Right, and be build bigger press boxes these days. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, I can tell you some stories about press boxes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think Bob had to broadcast the other day outside, what, 30-degree weather. Really? So, yeah. Yeah, you and That's Bob. You, said anyway. you and Bob keep in keep in contact quite a bit, don't you? Bob oh, Becker? sure. On Facebook and uh, you know Twitter and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I keep in uh, contact with Bob and Scott DeCamp over the uh, at the Muskegon uh, Chronicle MLive dot com. Gosh, I got a text from him. As a matter of fact, this morning we go back and forth all the time. So I keep in touch with guys like that and uh, uh, Mike Mack. Uh, with the uh, motor shorts people. Oh, Mike Mack. I forgot niece. about him. Oh, Mike Mack. Yeah, he's a, he took over for Gene as the uh, president of the uh, Muskegon Area Sports Hall of Fame. He's a great guy. He's coming home today from Aruba. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, is it anywhere near Kokomo? <laughs> I have no idea. I've been there once, but that was a long, long time yeah. ago. Um, I was going to ask you, too. Now, uh, I talked to uh, John Russell. Him and I are, are, are good friends these days, and oh, uh, John, he's a class guy. He John. is, he is, and yeah. and he's doing a lot of the. He's doing the sports again now on some kind sure. of a network thing, but uh -huh. but uh, he said that you know because he did the Fremont um, sports all the time for for years. Oh, sure. Right. And and then of course when they went to LCS and, and Eagle, then he started doing Muskegon sports. And uh -huh. he wasn't too sure about you uh, liking him too much when he when he got into the Muskegon side of things. Did what 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 were you thinking back then? Oh, I got along with John very well. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, we would get together before the season and we'd say, John, what games do you want to do? Yeah. And, uh, what games do we want to do? And you know, to be honest about it, I might have been a little selfish. John, I'm going to do the big games. You know, <laughs> seniority rules. But uh, he was very cooperative with us. And, uh, yeah, John, I always got along with him and Cal very well. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. I used to kid him a lot when we run into each other doing the same game. I'd say something, oh, you're going to destroy us in the ratings here, John. This is going to kill us, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you what, one thing I liked about John and Cal, they were not afraid to get on the road and go up uh, across the Money Mac Bridge no. up uh -uh. to the Superior Dome. You know, I. I was getting a little older that time, and boy, the last thing I want to do is get in a car and drive eight hours to do a high school football right. game when I could do another one close by. Right, you know? right. And the other thing we got near the end, too, I wanted a press box of that heat. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, I remember when they were doing they were doing basketball games, too, of course, and, and I, I was uh, filming for, I think it was Montague basketball at the time, and... Uh, uh -huh. And uh, they were there in this little corner <laughs> with their broadcast equipment, you know, where they could find yeah. a plug and, and, uh, you know, all, all, I mean, you, just sitting in those bleachers for all that time <laughs> alone yeah. is, is rough. You know, and these guys, they would always just, they would be there, man. And they were always very friendly. I had them broadcast for me a few different times when I was doing video for TV 40 and, uh, they broadcast for me and just did it for free. It was like, really? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah they're, they they're were good great. guys. Great it was guys. very fitting. They got into the Hall of Fame, uh, uh, what, a couple of years ago, as a matter of fact, him and Cal, very deserving of that fact. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I always got along very well with them. And Bob Bob worked with us on, uh, I think it was WLCS. He worked in the, he would do the AM games, and Gene and I do the FM games. Right, yeah. And then every once in a while, Bob and I would team up together when Gene couldn't make it. I remember one time uh, for a quarterfinal basketball game, I know Bob went over with me. Uh, I think we were at Alma High School doing a quarterfinal game back in 2003. 
And uh, Bob worked with me then as a color man. And yeah. he, interviewed, he interviewed me last year. I came home for a weekend, and uh, Bob interviewed me at halftime of the Muskegon game back in September. And then okay. the next day, I went and watched the Mona Shores game, and Tom Kendra, who now is working on the radio, what a great guy he is, too. And uh, uh, him and Al Tier, I guess, broadcasting the games uh, of the week, just like similar what Cal and John are doing. Right. I talked with them as well. So that was that was the only time uh, I was at the game. Mona Shores actually lost that game. That's the last time they lost the football game. So that was bad luck for them. <laughs> you know, um, uh, Bob Ecker, him and I go back to the LCS days when, when he came in, he wanted to be an intern. And uh-huh. uh, I was supposedly program director as they the, the, the title they threw me anyway. And uh, so I said, yeah, sure, free. Yeah, go ahead, you know. And I was so glad I did because he, he was really a big asset to, to both uh, our station, to, to sports, to everything. I mean, the guy, and then he, and then he still kept a, a full-time, you know, 40 hour a week job, you know, and, uh, but still did all that stuff. I was impressed by him. Very impressed. Yeah. You're, you're one of the few guys that actually worked full-time in radio. Yeah. One uh, of the few, <laughs> you know, I own the Bear Lake Tavern, you know, that, that was my, uh, uh, source of income and certainly right. wasn't from radio and right. writing uh, skills but yeah you you're the only full-time guy bob and i and uh yeah, yeah that's why i was work. always I broke they work together as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah that's why i was always broke because i was the full-time radio guy <laughs> well now you're making big bucks that's oh yeah I yeah that. yeah that's what you understand yeah. um yeah, but anyway, Bob, I, I talked to, I've been doing these uh, legend videos for all these different people that have been working in radio for years, uh-huh. and I talked to Bob about that. I would love for uh, when the, this COVID thing disappears or gets better or whatever, uh-huh. to to, uh, to have Bob uh, um, interview you, and I'll videotape you guys for doing a legends video, because you definitely are a Muskegon legend, there's no doubt uh-huh. about it. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. By the way, I got my first COVID shot yesterday. Well, that's good. Vaccination, yeah. So, that's one uh, good thing about being now. old. <laughs> yeah, that was one ad- advantage that I have. Yeah, right. down here in Florida, they uh, spotlight the elderly first, and I certainly qualify as being part of the elderly. Yeah, yeah. My sister's waiting for hers yet. She's she's seventy, so I don't know if that's like a, yeah. you know, down well, the line. I just here. got lucky. I got online, you know. My wife and I both got it within the last week, so that's good. We're going to get our second shot here in about three weeks, so well, well, we're going to be happy to do that. So I can get out of this house and go out and watch some ball game. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I say, that way too. If uh, once we we get those shots, then we can uh, <laughs> we could get you uh, to do an interview with us, or maybe come to Michigan again. You ever going to come to Michigan? Well, I'm, I like to get up there, but you're not going to see me up there. No, in Florida. Yeah. Away in January and February. You know? <laughs> that's right. That's right. I yeah. love the weather down here. You know, I like these seventy degree days that we're getting. Oh, today it's a little chilly. It's oh, sixty two is a high today. So oh, I'm that just sounds horrible. Here. Just sounds yeah, horrible. I can imagine. Yeah, it's snowing here, but yeah, yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> how lucky were they, Oscar, to have the weather that they did in January yeah. for the last two weekends of high school football? I right. mean, how lucky was that? You remember 1978 this time of the year? There yeah. was 10 feet of snow on the ground here. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They really got lucky. No doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Now, what are you, I got to ask you about the, uh, uh, who are you predicting to, to go to the Super Bowl? To the Super Bowl? Yeah. I like Green Bay. You know, they got to yeah. play up in uh, the frozen tundra. Yeah. I like Green Bay to win and, uh, Gosh, I'd like to see Buffalo beat Kansas City. Uh, I don't know why. I just root for the little guy. You know, Buffalo yeah. hasn't been there almost as long as the Lions to get into the Super Bowl. But, uh, you know, I'd like to see Buffalo win. But I think, you know, Patrick McHolmes isn't healthy enough. He hasn't, if he doesn't pass his concussion protocol, you know, they got to go to their backup quarterback. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. And, I, uh, I'm a Kenny, bit- I don't know if he, he can go uh, – 60 minutes being the quarterback with the Chiefs in the, a big game like that. Right. We'll see what happens. Yeah, because I'm a, I'm a I'm a big uh, Rodgers fan anyway. So Aaron oh, Rodgers, he's amazing. Yeah, I think you know, so too. You know, you know who, who reminds me of? Who reminds me of the the old Joe Namath? 
because he's you know yeah that's true yeah because yeah. he's very you know he's doing all these little commercials now for State Farm and you know yeah and he actually yeah. can act better than Joe yeah. <laughs> Joe could Joe. never act no but, Joe he does all those old commercials and he's uh he's appropriate for that because Joe is old yeah so, well he's I remember doing- when, uh Defeating the, the Baltimore Colts back in 1969 and that Super Bowl number three. And my good friend Earl Morrow, you know, was the quarterback for the Colts at that day. And he, Earl, to this day, never wanted to talk about that game. You know, he that was his down spot in his career and an illustrious career it was. But Earl yeah. never liked to talk about the 69 game. Yeah. Joe Namath and the, and the Jets beat his Baltimore Colts. Well, Breeze has to be a little bit uh, hurting right now, too, don't you think? Yeah, he didn't go out on a good note. By the way, did you see there was a nice, uh, classy uh, spot on YouTube, and I've seen it on uh, Facebook and whatnot, when uh, Tom Brady and Drew Breeze met together on the field, oh, about an hour or so after the football game. They're in their street clothes, hugging each other, and uh, Brady was playing with Drew Breeze's kids, and Got a hug from Drew Brees' wife. They're down on the field. I thought that was one of the classiest things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. You know, they're very good friends, Brees and Brady. Yeah. Uh, that was a class act on both of those guys. You know, hard to believe. 85 years you add up their ages. That they're playing in a, a spot to go to the uh, Super Bowl. That's incredible. Right, right. And then Brady gets to play after going from Tampa and going to yeah. uh, to Wisconsin. Yeah. 24 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what Aaron Rodgers said. He's home for a little bit colder weather than they had this week up in Green Bay. He yeah. likes seeing about 15 below. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't know why. But yeah, he's got a bionic arm, you know. Yeah, he must, yeah. I've never seen anybody like him. Yeah. That same here. I, I agree. I like I say I've I've been a big Green Bay fan all of a sudden for the last yeah. probably two, three years, but um I don't know what changed my mind, but I guess I got tired of watching the Lions lose. I don't know. <laughs> no, I do too. But I'll tell you what, my favorite high school, my football player favorite right now is Brady Rose of Mona Shores. I can't believe how good this kid is. Yeah. Oh my goodness. He's he has a, he's having the greatest season in the history of High school football. Really? It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Hopefully, I think this uh, is going to be taped, so this thing will probably go on after right. uh, the game on Friday. Right. But uh, we'll find out but if he's going to win or lose that game. And Well, what's ironic about it, they're going to be coached the other team by Dan Rohn, who's also a Muskegon guy. So yeah, yeah. It'll be fun to see what happens, but I wish him nothing but the best. And, Tony and East up at Ferris going to get a dandy and Brady Rose. Yeah. Well, what do you, what do you think about uh, uh, Montague as far as Cody Cater coming back? Over there? I like that. You know, Cody, I remember him in 2009. He got the uh, Athlete of the Year Award in Muskegon. And he, what a good-looking kid he was. And I remember when I was a master of so- ceremonies, uh, he went back to the desk, and I just looked at him, and I said, geez, I wonder if Cody, if Cody's going to be able to find a date for the prom this year <laughs> um, he was a tall kid too it really kind of surprised he was a me tall kid. Yeah. i guess he's Big helping kid. out the pat collins up there and uh, montague and um you know pat's he's been in there as a player and now as a coach he won it all in 2008 2009 and, and the best thing for pat he's got his kid as a quarterback right you know yeah and he, he's just a class act yeah um, yeah, I always like Cody. I too. think Monty is going to win that ball game. You know, if, I think so. I could be wrong, you know, because this is going to be uh, broadcast live after yeah. the game. But I, I predict Montague to win that game, and I think the Sailors will as well. We'll find out. Yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah, I'm. Uh, like I say, I'm a big, big fan. I was a big fan of Cody Cater. I used to, like I say, I used to videotape the games, and that was one I always looked forward to was when Cody yeah. was going to play because that kid, that kid could really play. He could really oh, play. Oh, he could. He could. You know, I remember, unfortunately for him, you know, he was starting for Central Michigan down at the big house. Right. Gosh, he played a couple of series of down, and he got injured. And, oh, that was pretty much it for Cody as a yeah. college football player. But, yeah, he was a tremendous athlete at uh, – Montague High School and yeah. a great kid as well. Now he's back at his old alma mater helping him out. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, which is, I think it's just a, a very, very humble thing to do and a very great thing to do to yeah. you know for the for the Montague students. So, 
Yeah, um, just a nice time. I imagine they're going to be practicing over at Whitehall this week. You know, they got one of the, I never saw that structure. I didn't know that until I saw it in, in one of the video clips. That they have a great indoor facility to practice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. I haven't yeah. been in it myself, but I live here. So well, there's you go. a lot of money, evidently, yeah. up there at the Montague White Hall area. You certainly have helped out that cause with, with all the money you make. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. They take all my money for that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do you ever visit your, uh, your old, uh, your old bar and grill over there or what? Well, anytime I get home, I do. You yeah. know, I just saw here this morning. A friend of mine sent me a video clip. There was a movie that just came out or is going to be released. And it was a story about a, a waitress at the Bear Lake Tavern. And they actually showed a trailer. Uh, it was filmed somewhat in the BLT. Really? Huh. I don't know much about it. I'm talking about something I just saw within the last few minutes. So I don't know all the particulars. But uh, uh, there was a movie out. And you're going to see the Bear Lake Tavern. Oh, man, it's too bad that they didn't have you in there, too. You could have been sitting behind wow, the bar or something. Very, yeah, that would have certainly helped out the ratings, wouldn't I? <laughs> that's yeah, right. Sure. That's yeah. right. Everybody would say, oh, but Jim Moyes is in this. We got to watch. <laughs> well, my picture might be in there because some of those old sports photos, I would yeah. hog myself into the pictures. Some of my old basketball teammates and baseball guys. Yeah. Now, who who owns that now? I don't even know. You You've sold it, right? Or do you still own it? Uh, Hobie Thrasher owns oh, it. Oh, Hobie owns it. Okay. Yeah. He you owned, know, he that guy, the man very, owns everything, man. What the heck? He does. But I think this is going to be the last stop for Hobie. Yeah. You know, he lives right across the street. Oh, okay. All right. And he's doing very well here, but I can't imagine what he's going through right now. Any restaurant right. tour right. in right. the state of Michigan or even in the entire country. My goodness, it's got to be tough for them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The but, ones that are making money are the drive throughs Right. You know, the McDonald's and the... Yeah, see, so you got a new Chick Fil A up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna Chick, love that Chick Fil A. Oh like I said, there's a new Culver's that came in uh, in yeah. Whitehall, and you know all these places that you can drive up and get your food. Yeah, they're, they're still popping up. So, but I still love the old mom and pop restaurants where you can sit down and have a right. delicious dinner and meet some old friendly faces. Uh, I always like to see people that I know when I walk into a restaurant. You know, you can't see anybody you know if you're going through in a car. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I'm just a sociable guy, Oscar. Yes, you are. You are one sociable guy. (laughs) Gene and I were, we were sociable if nothing else. That's you were. Yeah. And I tell you what, when I, 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 I found out later that Gene had passed and, uh, I, I felt bad because I, you know, it was before the whole COVID thing and everything. And I felt bad that I couldn't go to his, uh, his funeral, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's definitely going to be missed. He was a one good guy. I was proud to to do the eulogy for uh, Gene, and uh, I was proud also to induct him into the Hall of Fame, and and they have the award now in Gene's honor. Yeah, Gene's name. Yeah, yeah. The Distinguished Service Award is now the Gene Young Distinguished Service Award, and it's a very fitting tribute. Yeah, you know the the man. I mean, you know, I, he stayed on after you left. And, yes, he uh, did. And they told me that because I was running some of his games when uh, when I was over at the uh, at Clear Channel or iHeart or whatever it was called at the time. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, and uh, they they would say that he would come there and you know he had trouble with his legs and everything at that time. He'd have his blanket on his legs to keep warm yeah. and but he'd still be out there, you know, just just oh, to, yeah. to add some color, yeah. you know. And uh, it just that kind of a that just amazed me that he would still still be out there all that time. So yeah. he just loved the use of our community. You know? He yeah. just loved to do that. He, he loved people. And, uh, he loved working on the broadcast. And boy, I'll tell you what, I had a perfect uh, partner in my broadcast for many many years. Gosh, going back almost fifty years, Gene and I worked together. We even did a game down here in Florida one time. Really, he came down to visit me. Yeah. Yeah. The guy I was working with at the time on the radio, he says, hey, your buddy's here. I says, yeah. He says, well, it'd be most appropriate, I think, that if I step aside and you do a game with Gene. I said, oh, gosh, you're the nicest guy in the world. Wow. I appreciated that so much. And yeah, so Gene and I had one final basketball game that we broadcast down here in Florida about seven, eight years ago. Wow. Well, wow, that's very, very nice. You know, and we would sit there and talk on the phone for hours. Yeah. You know? You know, you know, Gene. Uh, I when I did um, work on one of a couple of those games over there at Clear Channel, 
And uh, you know me, I, I've been out of that whole thing since the KBZ days, which was like, what, 80s, 90s, early 90s? So I haven't done it for a long time. So they, they threw me in there. Well, you've done games before, you know. And I said, okay, yeah, I guess I have. And, and Gene says, oh, yeah, we got a, we got a, <laughs> a natural here. Oscar can do it, you know. <laughs> and I, I forgot everything. I had no idea. I was terrible. I, I said, you got to take me off these games because I don't know what I'm doing. So. Oh, I can't believe that, Oscar. I think you <laughs> fit in perfectly. Well. Out of, I don't well, know. you're a credit okay. to radio yourself. I like what you're doing here. You know, that show on Saturday morning, uh, your ratings got to be astronomical. Oh, yeah, at least five, six people anyway. You know, no, 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 no. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of other people listening. I, <laughs> I picked you up the other day. Yeah, well, that's you know, the I get you down. That's amazing yeah. about the Internet now. That's the nice thing, yeah. Yeah, because you, you know, can get a... a clear channel about 10 or 11 years ago or something like that. Uh, I said, you mean to tell me that people in Denmark can listen to our game? Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, it is very kind of very cool because you know my yeah, sister listen can to, listen in Florida and you can listen over yeah. there in Florida and in, anywhere. So, well, I was picking up Bob and I was picking up Tom Kendra and all the rest of the guys around here, you know. And I want to listen to one of my old Muskegon teams play, and I can pick it up on the on my computer and right. on my cell phone even. You know, oh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So modern technology. Yeah, it's it's really it's it's bigger than we are. <laughs> Well, I can remember back in the 1950s when I was a string reporter with the Muskegon Chronicle, I had to type up my uh, story that I'd write, and I'd have to hand deliver it yeah. over to the Muskegon Chronicle. And I didn't even have a driver's license. Quite often, if my mother wasn't available, I'd have to go out on the street and hitchhike. <laughs> now, you just, now you just hit a send button, you know? Yeah, yeah. For your story. So that's. Well, you can type it up on your phone. So there you go. (laughs) Yeah. I could have done it on my phone. Yeah. It's amazing what you can do today compared to 70 years ago or so. And it changed so quickly, it seems like. It seems like. Yeah. You know, when I was at KBZ in 90, I don't even know, 94, 95, something like that, that when we first started doing the automation thing. And then, uh, and then after that, it just kind of blew up everything just kind of blew up and everything went computer and it was just amazing so yeah so anyway well, yeah well, progress would, is good I, yeah i think so i mean you know a lot sometimes, of people look at it yeah sometimes yeah. some people look at it as as being the the devil's workshop but yeah. you know by the way i really like what they've done with the downtown there in Christmas oh yeah i was there about a year or so ago i mean what they've done there is, it, it just blew my mind i couldn't believe how much it's progressed and the for the better, but you know, I was a skeptic, you know, in the beginning. Oh, yeah. what happened to my beautiful downtown right. area? But, but now I think it's really, really looking good, and you guys can be proud of what you have there in the Port City. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of good people that are really pushing for it too. I know Andy O'Reilly's really big on, on Muskegon, and so is John uh-huh. Ben White, and you know, there's a lot of a lot of good people that are are behind. Oh, I remember it, Andy. So. I worked with Andy too. A long oh time yeah, ago. yeah. He was so. at. Uh, Gosh, I can't remember which station Rock. he's at now. He's, he's at Rock. He's at Clear yeah. Channel, one of yeah. them, too. Yeah, he was at Rock. But, okay. yeah, he, uh, he, he, you know, very positive pro Muskegon. He runs the, the yeah. local TV station now over there. And, okay. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. So then there's a lot of different investors coming in that found, found out that, you know, when I came back, when I came here in 1983 or 84, um, I moved here to the Muskegon area, and – coming from the other side of the state and i saw this place and i'm thinking what a beautiful beautiful place i mean these yeah. these people have got have got everything that you need right here it right. took a while for people to realize that <laughs> right. well i always realized it you know I yes so did i yeah. stopping grounds my old bones can't take that cold weather anymore right right I'm, i got family down here i got uh my stepsons that live here i got my daughters that live here and uh of course, my lovely bride. We we really love it down here, and but you know, home will always be Muskegon, Michigan, and and North Muskegon. Now, I got a plot over there in Lakeside, you know, Lincoln Township. I'll be there someday. Yeah, well, when you're there, hopefully you... a long time. Hopefully this game goes into extra innings. You know. Yeah, there you go. Your life expectancy is concerned. Let me let me ask you this. Let's change because that's kind of morbid thinking about any of us dying. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's but, true. Let's but anyway, there. yeah, but uh, let me let me t- ask you about. Do you know anything about? Uh, have you ever met Ernie Harwell? 
I never met Ernie. No. Okay. Uh, Paul Carey is partner. I used to interview him all the time. You know, and Paul would go to all the state championship football games down in the Silverdome. And when Paul was there, I interviewed him anytime he was uh, available. So uh, I knew Paul Carey a little bit, but I never did get a chance to uh, meet Ernie Hartwell. Okay. All right. Um, any great people that come out in your, in your, in your mind that you've met or would like to have met as far as sports people? Well, most of them are right there in the Muskegon area. You know, Duffy Doherty uh, was a, a great friend of my father's and he was a class guy at Michigan state university. Uh, uh, he was one guy that, uh, was uh, loyal to my dad when he was, uh, in the hospital, uh, not doing very well. Duffy, uh, after a Michigan State game, would go and bring the uh, game films over to the hospital and show uh, my dad the uh, game films of the previous Michigan State game, and that was just a class move on his part. Yeah. You know, I always remember Duffy Doherty. Uh, most of the people I met are right there in Greater Muskegon, uh, okay. Oscar. And, right. uh, you know, mostly I remember the coaches and the ADs and, you know, yeah. and, and go back. And that, that's one of the things I'll always cherish is the, the cooperation and the friendship I have with uh, coaches and athletic directors of Muskegon and, and the, the fans. Who the excitement and, of uh, high school sports, that to me was great. Just for the kids that just played the game for the love of the game right, and not right. for the money. Right. Um, what do you who do you who do you think was the uh, the greatest player you ever saw here in the Muskegon area? Well, uh, right now, how about Brody Rose? Right, Brady, right. I keep calling him Brody Rose. It's Brady Rose. Well, yeah. I'll tell you, he's he comes to mind right now. Of course, I remember Earl Morrill. And back then, we call him Earl Morrill. For whatever reason, when he went to Michigan State, he went from Morrill to Morrill. I was so mad at the radio guys. Wait a minute, that's Earl Morrill, not Earl Morrill. <laughs> <laughs> Earl was such a modest guy. He didn't go and call me anything he wants. So I guess Morrill stuck. But you talk to a lot of people in Muskegon, they still call him uh, Earl Morrill. Okay. But he was a class guy. Just I, He certainly was one of my idols growing up. Hmm. Now, as far as coaches, who, who, do you, who pops out in your mind for coaches? Oh, my goodness. You know, my best friend is Dave Taylor. You know, he was a coach at Muskegon. He led him to a couple of state championships and, uh, there's been so many great coaches in Greater Mesquite. That's one of the reasons why we're successful. Mm-hmm. You know, Shane Fairfield and Pat Collins. Shane, yeah. and, uh, you know, look, look what they've done. And Mike Holmes over there at uh, Muskegon Catholic Central. And, and Jack Shirters, he, who can forget him? And Dusty Fairfield, <coughs> Roger Cheverini, Larry Harper. You can go back and back. And, oh, I know I'm forgetting somebody. But, yeah. you know, that's one of the things that Muskegon has is great coaches. We've got coaches that leave here and go elsewhere, like Dan Rohn, who's now the head coach at Warren D. LaSalle. Uh, Dan was at Fremont for a number of years. I'm sure he's good friends with John Russell and Cal. Yeah. Uh, but Dan, uh, he started his career at Muskegon Orchard View. I remember when he was playing football, I broadcast a few of his games. And, boy, he's uh, going to try to win a state championship. He doesn't win it, then uh, Matt Kozak, another great coach, you know, he's done amazing things for Mona Shores. It's, I don't know. It just rubs on. We just have some phenomenal coaches here out of greater Muskegon. Yeah. I always and thought. Oh, I forgot like Oki Johnson. How about Oki Johnson? You know, at Muskegon in the Heights. He coached football, basketball, and baseball. Okay. Now, what a, now Coach Sugars, I, that, that's one name that I always remembered when I first came here to, to the Muskegon area. Did, was he as amazing as everybody said he was? Oh, he's, even, he's even more amazing. You know, he's actually a better person than uh, he is a football coach, if you can say that. I interviewed Jack uh, many, many times. And he was very good friends with Tony and Nice. And you talk about two opposites. Yeah. Uh, I go over to Muskegon High School, interview Tony and Nice prior to a football game, and Jack often would be in the office. Tony you know, was a little bit more colorful, let's say, with a salty language, more so than Jack. And Jack, you know, he might say, golly, that's probably the closest thing he comes to an expletive. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but uh, they're the best of friends in the world. And uh, Jack, uh, you know, he lost his uh, wife, Julie, here not too long oh, ago. That's too and bad. and uh, that's kind of a sad thing for Jack. And right now he's keeping busy helping his son as an assistant football coach up at Traverse City. And, 
Yeah, I heard that. Uh, yeah. Also an assistant coach for Tony Anise's buddy up at Ferris State. So Jack's staying busy, and uh, gosh, he's still the winningest coach in Greater Muskegon right, history. Right. And he, he's still coaching. Yeah. And he graduated from high school in Muskegon with my wife, too, class of 1964. Okay. Now he, he was uh, he was I think he retired the same year that my grandson was going to start was playing football there for for uh-huh. um, Orchard View, but um, yeah, or Oak Ridge rather. 19, I mean, ten or eleven yeah. somewhere around there. A couple of years after I left. Yeah, yeah. And Oak Ridge. I, I said but I said Orchard View at Oak Ridge. Still coaching. Yeah. You can keep him on. Keep him on a coaching. Now, what about Oak Ridge? What happened to Oak Ridge? I don't, you don't see a whole, a whole lot about Oak Ridge these days. I mean, since. Well, the reason Oak Ridge, you don't see too much about them now is because of Montague, you know. Yeah, yeah. Montague uh, defeated them earlier year, but they're still very successful. Oak Ridge has still been in the playoffs yeah. for a number of years, and they were in an incredible division this year. Yeah. They had to play Grand Rapids Catholic Central, who probably could have moved up a couple of notches and won a division. Now, they were the defending champs for a year ago. They dropped down a division, and lo and behold, unfortunately for Oak Ridge, they had to draw them in the uh, in the tournaments and the playoffs, and uh, they got pummeled by uh, Grand Rapids Catholic, but Grand Rapids Catholic's pummeling everybody else as well. Yeah, yeah. And they'll be big, big favorites to win Saturday. That'll be today, I guess, as you want to look ahead of it a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Little, the interview. Little bit yeah, yeah, they'll be playing today. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, w- what about uh, Whitehall? What do you think about them? Because they, well, they really come around. They know, really come yeah. around here in the last couple of years. Yeah. Huh? yeah, they have. You know, they haven't won a West Michigan Conference championship since Nate McClough was a quarterback in the, the late 1990s. Yeah, you know, but uh, you know they've had uh, a, a great program. I see the West Michigan Conference is going to expand and include schools like Ludington and Fremont, Holt, Asbury, and Manistee. Uh, I think Orchard View also is going to go into that. So. That's going to be very interesting. And uh, Whitehall, I think, is going to dominate most of the minor sports. Like, uh, they'll dominate in sports like track and field because they right. just have the numbers. Oh, yeah. yeah. And great athletes out of there. Yeah, yeah. And they had a good team this year. They gave Montague by far their closest uh, game. I know. I know, right? I, yeah, I, I, I saw that game. Yeah, that yeah, was, was a great game. It was less than a if I remember right. Yeah. And, yeah, they, they've done a great job up there and but the, they were in a higher division than Montague. You know, Montague had a pretty easy road to the uh, state championship this year. Uh, that division wasn't as tough as it's been in the past. Right, right. There were no more Monroe, St. Mary Catholics, or Ithacas like they were in the past to, to be in their way. So Montague's had it pretty easy getting there. But saying that, they had a great team this year. This is one of the best uh, teams ever to come out of the West Michigan Conference. Yeah. Okay. Well, sir. Um, okay. Hey, great I, talking with you, Oscar. Same with you. I mean, it's been so long. I'm going to talk to, uh, also going to talk to Mr. Terry Ficarelli. You remember him? <laughs> oh, gosh, do I remember him. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> oh, my gosh. He was the master of the polysyllabic uh, vernacular. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. He had his own dictionary. He was, he's yeah. quite, quite the guy. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I first met him um, at KBZ too when I was program director there. That's when he yeah. first came to Muskegon, and he had gave all these demands of what he wanted to to broadcast his. You know, him and I didn't rub didn't rub the right way at first, but uh-huh. we became good friends. He's he's a good Boy, guy. Nobody nobody likes hockey more than Terry Bickerell. That's right. Uh, That's he right. He does a phenomenal job, and yeah, Terry and I go back a long way. Yeah. Hey, tell him I said hello when you talked to him. All right, well, all right. I I really appreciate you talking to me. Thank thank well, you, sir. I appreciate you calling, and remember the old announcer down here in the Sunshine State. Okay, and yeah, like I say, you got to get together with uh, with with Bob when you guys uh, when you do come to Michigan. Um, hey, I'm retired. I I'm free anytime, but uh, like I said, you got to make it during the summertime. Well, I don't yeah, like to I know. Go up there and during the winter, that's well, for sure. Well, that's to say when you when you come to Michigan, you know you got my number. Uh, make sure you you get okay. with, but we'll get together you, me, and Bob, and we'll we'll do okay. a, a legends video. The amazing hey, uh, Jim Moyes. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> come on, come on, come on now. It's getting deep now. Huh? Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> you said I was rich, so there you go. Right. We're, we're both getting kind of deep here. But anyway. Well, yeah, thank you so much for uh, contacting me. I sure appreciate it. All right, thank you, sir. You take <laughs> thank care. Thank you, Oscar. Yeah, All right, bye-bye. Bye.